Now, uh, closes public comment. Mr. Clerk, next item. Items 6 and 13 will call special for cards from the public. Thank you. Ms. Perry, do you wish to have public comment first on item 6? Okay. We do have several cards. Um, oh. One minute or two minutes? Uh, I would say, they, how many cards do you have? I'd say probably 20. Uh, I'd keep it to one minute each so we can get through this, and then after that we'll have the CLA and the CAO and housing come to the table. Great. Thank you. I'd like to call up the following individuals. Um, Esther Alejandro, Pastor Ryan Bell, Gerald Barnes, and Helen Garrett. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity to come here today. I am a member of the Los Angeles Community Action Network and I want to speak on the uh, per passing of this permanent ordinance for the city of Los Angeles. And what motivates me is the fact that as a member of the organization, we have worked for the past uh, five plus years for this ordinance to pass. It would be uh, one of the things that could correct a problem that exists already in the community that many people are, have been losing their homes and also that some people especially the most vulnerable uh, the most vulnerable of all our community residents do not have strong protections and if you pass this ordinance you would also be following an example that has already been said by cities like San Francisco and San Diego and we need this ordinance to pass so I thank you we ask of you pass this ordinance thank you very much Gerald Barnes followed by Helen Garrett Barbara Schultz and Alicia Port. Gerald Barnes LA can we are all in this together everyone in this room will be affected by this ordinance our residents don't possess the in-demand skills to afford a 2000 a month loft. we're not asking you to solve all our problems just a slight change in priorities and some human decency. We as adults have an obligation to our children and grandchildren. This ordinance will affect their collective future. What binds us together is greater than what drives us apart. Being a council member is a privilege given to you by the citizens of Los Angeles. To approve this ordinance as is would be an abuse of that privilege. Helen. My name is Helen Garrett, and I'm a proud member of POWER, People Organized for Westside Renewal. You all woke up this morning and got out of bed. Some very low-income people woke up this morning and struggled to their feet on the street. The Residential Hotel Ordinance must be passed today, now! Yeah. Nothing justifies any more delay. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Not 10% of these rooms should be reserved for very low income tenants. 30% must be set aside for very low income tenants today and now. You must do the right thing. Save the residential hotel ordinance and set aside 30% of rooms for very low income tenants, today and now. Barbara Schultz. Barbara Schultz, Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles. Um, I support this ordinance with two caveats. 
Um, first, as you'll hear from several speakers, we need to raise the percentage of extremely low income affordability in the exemption. Uh, there was an argument in committee that this might risk a takings claim. I don't believe there's any merit in that argument. The State Ellis Act allows LA to completely prohibit residential hotels from going out of business. This ordinance doesn't go anywhere near as far as that. It, it allows for conversions and demolitions as long as the units are replaced. And of course, it has its exemption for affordable Secondly, housing. Secondly, I represent the Wiggins plaintiffs. This council signed the Wiggins agreement in August of 2006. I just want to make clear that most of the downtown hotels are subject to that agreement and therefore much of the language in this ordinance, such as the exemptions and the section on large hotels, does not actually apply to the downtown, hotel, ho the downtown hotels as it would violate your earlier Wiggins agreement. Thank you. Alicia, followed by Michelle Autry, followed by Al Sabo. Hi, my name is Alicia Polk. I'm a former, uh, former program manager for NAMP Communities AB 2034 program. Um, and in saying that, I can say that affordable housing does work in Los Angeles. Uh, we need a strong residential hotel ordinance to preserve our affordable housing. Our residential hotels are home to extremely low income individuals, the disabled and the elders have an obligation to the citizens of Los Angeles, whether rich or poor. Please join us in this fight against, or against homelessness. Please pass the city ordinance. Thank you. Michelle Autry. Followed by Al Sabo. Uh, thank you. I was going to give someone else a chance to address the council because I'm here so often. But I think that this can't be restated enough. You have an obligation to house the most vulnerable. And this is your opportunity to do that. So put your vote where your mouth is. Do something with the power that you have to prevent more harm. You could be in the street. Do ever think about that. Again, this is a democracy, and that means a government by and for all the people, not just the rich people. One day you could be in peril of being homeless. And think about that. If there's a rent, if I mean if you can take one vote today to prevent the suffering of these people, you know, God might bless Good you. Good morning, Council. My name is Al Sabo, and I'm a resident of one of these residential hotels that we're trying to preserve. Uh, without preserving them, uh, including the amendment, uh, people like myself will definitely have no place to go but the street due to our limited income. Yet, uh, attorneys who supposedly work on our behalf, employed by the city, people such as Mercedes Marquez, will come out there and distort truths, trying, in essence, uh, to change the ordinance, basically saying that uh, if you pass the ordinance with more than 10% of the uh, income uh, level uh, required for uh, people such as myself, that it would be ruled unconstitutional. Don't let that scare you. It's a scare tactic true to the Bush administration, which exists in San Francisco, has been on the books for 30 years. It's gone all the way to the Supreme Court, and it's passed every legal test. Pass it with the amendment. Hello, I'm the owner of the Cecil Hotel, a 600-room hotel in downtown. Uh, we have been put on a residential list by the Los Angeles Housing Department. We should not be grouped with residential hotels. Thank you, Casey Horan. However, if we don't increase this to at least 30%, all of that will be undermined in that we will see over the course of the coming years thousands of people who will be displaced and will be on their streets. Good morning, Council. My name is Michael Carrion, and I've worked with Skid Row for many years. And when these people are coming to you, look at the amount of people here. Please listen to what they have to say. We're talking about homes. Most of you have probably never slept in a cardboard box, so you don't know what it feels like to be out in the streets, in the cold, in the rain, sleeping underneath whatever you can find for shelter. This is the next step up. You gotta do something instead of just talking about it. We talk and talk and talk and we don't do anything. We spend hundreds of millions of dollars on people analyzing everything. If we were to put that money into these apartments and into these homes and pass ordinances like this, we'd have no problem in the city. But we're spending too much time finding out all the things that are wrong. We know what's wrong, ask these people. We live there, we work there, we deal with this on a daily basis. But yet you want to spend it on an analyst. The residential hotel ordinance is in its essence a preservation ordinance. 
There are over 18,000 residential hotel units in the city of Los Angeles. It is, as I said, its primary goal is to preserve the residential hotel units as they are. In fact, 87% of the residential hotel units have, of buildings have never rented to a tourist. Uh, they remain firmly as a residential hotel business, providing low cost uh, If we don't pass this ordinance, we are leaving it uh, completely open for buildings to be sold because all of these are, almost all of these are privately held. Almost none of them are, have public covenants on them now. If they transfer, if they transfer to the open market, uh, there is no way that the couple that you just described could pay the rents that would rise to market. In, in other words, this is meant to make it difficult and the Supreme Court has drawn the line and we are right there on it. Um, in, in what is without question one of the most pro-tenant ordinances that have ever come before the City Council in its entire history. I see no other um, speakers on the queue. Uh, Madam Clerk, please open the roll on the amended version before us. Close the roll and tabulate the votes. 13 ayes. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.